Bridgeway goes well back into the religious and historical past of the area. The name Bridgeway is closely linked with St. Bridget. Bridget is said to have come from Kildare, blessed a well and knelt on a stone pouring blessings and good luck on the people of Bridgeway. Historians tell us that Bridget was in fact a sister of St. Coleman of Cline, who helped in spreading the gospel among the people. When one looks at the early Irish names for Britwe, Briaca and Briuc, one wonders does it derive from Bridget's own name? Did she establish a Christian settlement here, or just, like her brother, incline? Nevertheless, the well here at Britwe on this farm has been a place for worship down through the years on August the 15th. Several cures have been reported here. Bridgeway, it would seem, was an ecclesiastical centre, as its history is closely tied up with that of Cool Abbey. Apparently the Church of Bridgeway was an offshoot of this monastery of Cool. Our earliest reference to Bridgeway is in a charter made just after the arrival of the Norman Barrys in 1182. The Norman settlers in East Cork came from Devon, and they made grants of local Irish churches to the Abbey of St. Nicholas in East Devon. The charter still survives in Exeter, and on it states that John Fitzwilliam granted to the Abbey of St. Nicholas, Exeter, the Church of Britway, and the tithes of five knights fees. This charter was made in the presence of the Bishop of Cline and witnessed by all the leading Cork Norman knights, Robert Fitzsimon, Radulf, his son, who was slain at Lismore in 1182, and Fitzhugo. We know a little further of Britway until we come down to the penal times. The earliest reference we have to a parish priest is to Reverend Cornelius O'Brien, who was parish priest from 1690 until his death in 1720, and is buried here within the ruins of this old church in Britway. Another great scholar and priest Reverend Timothy O'Brien, who obtained his degree at the Irish College of Jewhaus, France, is buried here in this graveyard. Despite the ferocity of the penal laws, he wrote many fearless texts in defence of the Catholic faith, the last of which, Truth Triumphant, was published in 1747, the year of his death. Britway is especially noted for the number of Irish scholars the district produced and who now lie buried in this graveyard, the most notable being Willem Rockcotter, who flourished during the early years of the Penal Code. He was born at Corradermot in 1675 and was well versed in Latin as well as Irish and English. Here in Britway graveyard there is a headstone to the Lamasney of Ballyogaha. This is the burial place of Darby Lamasney of Ballyogaha and family. It is undated and would belong to the late 1700s. Two members of this family who lived in the 1800s were Gaelic scholars. Taigo Lamasna, who wrote Irish verses to Michal O'Langain in 1792. They were written in Ballyogaha in Ulihan. There are also some Irish poems written by Sean O'Lamasna of the same address. There is also a stone to Father Jeremiah Lamasny, where reads as follows, Here lies the remains of Jeremiah Lamasny, who died of fever in the discharge of his profession and duties in Mallow on the 14th of August, 1819, aged 26. There are altogether seven headstones to the Lamasny families here in Britway Cemetery. It is said that the well-known Fenian leader, Captain Mackey, was born of parents who belonged to this district. He was Captain William Mackey Lamasney of the America Army who came to Ireland during the 1867 Rising. Before leaving Britway's graveyard, one's eye catches a glimpse of a peculiar pillar stone directly inside the main gate. 
This dates back to the age of the Celts. The inscriptions are written in an old Celtic alphabet called Ogham. Each letter was made by cutting a set of strokes along the edge of the stone. It was set up to mark the graves of warriors of great men. The saddest part of our Irish history was the famine period of 1845 to 1847. It had a devastating effect here on Brisbane. Evidence of this can be seen here at this plot of ground, which is about one eighth of an acre in extent. The school was closed for two years as death and emigration left an air of desolation and despondency all over the Britway area. In the mid 1700s, many of the priests would have had to celebrate Mass in secluded places as priests were illegal. Close to Britway, here we have this field called Clash and Afrin in our draft. The first permanent school building built in Britway was built in the year 1845. An application to the Commissioners of Education for aid towards building a schoolhouse was made on the 9th of May 1844. Here in Britway, the earliest mention of a school dates back to the head school in the first half of the 19th century. Local historians say it existed on the site of this present school. Books were few and often the teacher was not very well educated himself. The British forbade the Irish to be educated in order to keep them illiterate. The teacher had to secretly gather his pupils around him while one pupil stood at a point of vantage, ready to warn the master if an informer was approaching. Across the road here from the school was Enright's Forge. Whither came the local farmers and the gentry to have their horses shod and wheels banded. The ringing of the anvil broke the silence of the district except when drowned by the chorus of the playful kids just let loose from school. William Mackey was born in November 1904 and went to school at Britway National School. After leaving school he was known from each direction from Britway for many miles by all the farming people. This is the site where William had a mill, and everybody would bring along their barley and oats to have it rolled. This is the site where Moore's barn was situated. A dance floor used to be provided by the local Crossroad Platforms Committee. Admissions to the dance were 2p and 6p with free drink and biscuits. As we conclude our nostalgic trip back into the garden that is childhood for the many, many people of Brisbane, it will recall the years spent in school here, in the post-war Devil Era's Ireland. This little spot with its school of four bare walls and wooden floor, where the children gathered each day in sunshine, rain or snow, to master the art of learning. Here within the walls of one small star classroom, the children unlock so many windows of wonder and whetted the appetite for knowledge. Those were very significant years and hopefully have remained part of their lives on the journey that is now life. <laughs>